I think this video really illustrates the point of how important camera movement is to creating video effects. It's something that you really need to get your head around and understand because a lot of these effects really rely on either having that camera movement from the point at which they were filmed or it's added afterwards to match to those shots of the way the camera was moving. This is something that I'm gonna be talking about very specifically in my new module which is coming out on my course. And I talk about while on location, you want to try and keep the camera moving because it gives you a lot of options when creating effects in the computer. So it's something you wanna get your head around and keep in mind when you're filming your own effects. We've got a first little transition right here through this eye shot to this shot in the background. We've got this first shot here of this colored powder sort of coming into the frame or filling the entire frame. Then we've got a nice little transition here as Eric's sort of zooming into the center here of the frame. And then he's starting to fade in another shot which looks to be a close up of an eye. So we can see that here. And in the eyeball, he's done a little bit of a mask and he's added a little bit of a feather around the edge here and that's bringing in the last shot here so when you lay these out in the timeline you need to have a uniform sort of zoom effect over the top so that the camera continues to fly all the way through hey guys it's Ross here and I'm back with another video I've been offline not making any videos for a little while so I'm jumping straight back in with a breakdown of Eric's India video now the time that I've had Hat off I've been working on some new content not only for my motion effects pro course where I've got a module and that's coming out very very soon for those of you that keep asking but also for new content coming next year and it's going to be really heavily focused around travel effects so if you're interested in that sort of content then definitely subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out. Here's another really clever transition here where he's using the movement inside the shot as the stick is kind of coming down to beat the drum. He's panning the camera across using some sort of whip pan, which looks to be added digitally. Then he's got this really epic shot here of this dust cloud in super slow motion. Now I'd say for sure, that this has been filmed and then he's done the slowing down in post using the frame interpolation which is built into After Effects. And you can see that by the way that After Effects is blending these shots together. When you film it in super slow motion, that you don't get any of that artifacting and there's no part of the shot where After Effects or the computer is trying to blend the two frames together. With these particular effects, it's best to try and shoot them at a higher frame rate to try and give as many frames to After Effects as possible to work with. And that's gonna give you much better results than working obviously with a lower frame rate because After Effects has to fill in a lot more of those frames. So you're going to get wildly different results. I just know from experience when trying to slow things down that are really detailed like water or stuff like this, that it's gonna have a lot of artifacts if you don't film it in a higher frame rate. So I'd say at least this has been shot in maybe 60 frames. I'd probably say maybe even 100 frames a second. And then it can be slowed down to get that really smooth slow motion. Now to get that super slow motion effect in After Effects, what you have to do is you have to right click and enable time remapping. You choose the section that you want to slow down, drag that right out, and it's this button here that you want to click twice. And that's going to activate the frame blending mode where After Effects will start filling in the frames that it doesn't have. Now you're going to get wildly different results depending on how high the frame rate was when you filmed the clip and also how complex the scene is that you're trying to slow down. So just keep that in mind, it's always a balance of trying to find the perfect point in between. Now there are plugins that you can use which are much better at guessing the frames in between as you slow it down. But I find that if you film it in a reasonably high frame rate to start with, and you slow it down inside of After Effects that you'll get pretty decent results. We've got another little interesting effect here going on, which is this effect here. So it looks like he's added a glow effect here to the eyes, you can see in one shot. We've got another glow effect right here on the forehead. And then he's got this 
effect which appears to be coming sort of from around the back of the head as it's moving forward to the front. Almost like a 3D sort of effect. Now this could have been done with a plug-in, but you might be able to do it using some like the glow effect or something inside of After Effects. It's something that I'd have to look at to really see an approach at how I would go about doing this. But I would start with the built-in plugins inside of After Effects using like the glow effect and things like that. And then I would resort to using plugins if need be. We've got another one of Eric's really famous transitions here where it sort of looks like the camera's whipping. And I believe he does it by adding a second shot over the top with a really fast camera movement and sort of masking and blending all those shots together to create that really fast camera pan. We've got a really nice transition here. I love these little simple transitions of just lining two shots up because it really shows like the creative thinking of when sitting there as an editor and looking for similar elements when you're cutting things together. Instead of just going with straight cuts, he's just seen the potential of two shots that look very similar. So he's looking at this middle part here of this cloth and then he's lined it up really nicely with the pouring of this liquid out of this cup here as it sort of lines up those two shots, just creates a really interesting cut. Again, I really like this little sequence here as he's using the camera movement or the direction of the camera to transition between the shots. And although that camera movement is not a transition in its own way, when you transition or create a mask between those two shots, that is real camera movement. And I'm not talking about just a digital transition of a, a digital camera moving in that direction. This is the actual camera that's moving in that direction. And you line those up between those two shots, you just get a really nice transition between two shots. So it's created a really nice mask line here from the second shot. So we got a second one here and we've got our first shot here as it transitions nicely as the camera is moving in this direction. Then it also looks to be some sort of Luma mask here where he's removed that window and he's changing the shot on the outside. So we can see just here, we've got a transition point between two shots again. So we've got one shot here and then we've got another shot over here. And you can see that we've still got his face here on the side of screen and it just transitions all those shots nicely together. Now we've seen this similar shot before used in Ben TK's India video and he did his a little bit different where he followed this tennis ball, this cricket ball, as it's being hit, he zoomed in. And if you wanna see that, you can go check that out in his video. And I've also done a breakdown on that particular shot there. But Eric's kind of put his own creative flair on this particular shot and done it in a slightly different way. And that's what I love about these creative videos. It's kind of each person expresses and approaches creativity in a slightly different way. And that's what it's all about. We don't want to just keep replicating the same things over and over and over. We want to take similar things and come up with different results. So what Eric's cleverly done here is he's taken the tennis ball in one shot and as it's moving up, he's transitioned it very slightly here. You can see into the sun on another shot. So he started to bring in that second shot up here and we're still in the first shot. He's got a nice little warp zoom happening here. You can see as the camera's sort of zooming right in there. And then he transitions really nicely into this sunset shot here where we can see the sun here as it's transitioning. Then he's continuing that zoom all the way through to this final drone shot. And he's also added a bit of that camera shake or camera movement onto it. I've got a video talking exactly about how to do this and I've linked to that in the description below as well. Just got another really interesting little sequence here of shots where he's using this flywheel here that's sort of again as a transition point. So we end up transitioning from one shot into another here. That then transition again as that wheel then turns into another shot and then a final shot here. So just a really creative way of using an object that he's seen in the edit and then he's layering in shots behind that. Just using a basic sort of masked feather which by itself is a really simple thing to do but 
What makes it really interesting and more complicated is the way that he uses it. It just shows how creative someone like Eric really is when they can just look at a shot and just see potential for effects or a way to edit or move their story forward. We have another one of those iconic Eric transitions here where he's taken one shot and just basically put it straight over the top which is this shot here, and the camera's moving very quickly in one direction, so there's a lot of that sort of natural motion blur. And then he matches that up by using a simple fade here, it looks like, through to the second shot. So we can start to see that second shot coming through this first one into this really nice hyperlapse shot here. And credit is due where credit is due because hyperlapses are not an easy thing. And to do them really well and make them interesting, is again not an easy thing to do so to have a shot like this that you know would have taken quite a while to film is really really impressive we've got this transition here which looks to be some sort of light leak transition so we go from this shot it looks like yeah there's a light leak coming in from this side of the frame then fills that frame as he then transitions into another shot here where the camera is moving in that direction past this pillar, which creates a really nice cut point for this shot here, which sort of moves into this tunnel. And he could have done this using just a gimbal by walking the gimbal forward, and then he sped this up and added a motion blur to it. But he's got this really nice transition here, which looks, where it looks like the camera's going into the end of this tunnel in one shot. And then he starts to bring in the second shot in an interesting way. It looks like either a Luma reveal where he's fading on the brightest points of the image first and then reveals the darker points and that camera movement again just transitions that shot through. He's got some camera blur added on here. Now I don't know if that was part of the original shot it could have been added digitally. Then we have some beautiful macro shots here. I love these macro shots. And what I really love about these is the camera is continuing to move. So it's, it's a good example where you should always try and keep that camera movement because it adds a lot more dynamic movement into the shot and makes the shot look a lot more interesting and cinematic. Then we've got a really creative transition here. It's the back of Eric here. Someone's throwing this colored powder over the top and over that he's overlaid the colors of the Indian flag with this symbol here in the middle and he uses that as a really nice transition point into the wheel of this cart. So again, a really interesting and creative transition. We've got a series of really nice cuts here of this whole scene into this shot where someone is blowing red dust at the camera. So this is one shot by itself it looks like and then he's transitioned into a second shot here. So this window has been cut out or masked out and on the outside we have our original shot. So all of this in here is one shot of that person blowing that dust and that can just be a static camera shot set up in front of that person. This shot on the outside, so all of this is part of a second shot which is a gimbal shot moving backwards away from this window. So this would have been filmed most likely on a gimbal just walking the camera backwards and then speeding this up in post, maybe with some stabilization if it needs that. And for this window here, what he could have done is he's probably done a track. So on this, or he's done a whole three day track on this entire scene. Then he's right clicked here and basically created a null, which would have probably have sat there with a 3D camera over the top. So we would have had a camera back here that basically is has our 3D camera tracking data. He's then got a null and he's parented this layer to that null. So he's parented that to that layer and positioned it in the background so that it stays all nicely attached in the background. And then he's got a simple fade off from there. And the other thing I really like here is he's kept again with the whole theme of the video of the Indian colors of the flag as well as the camera's transitioning back through. So just an, again, a really clever way of incorporating some colors into his effect here. And then that transitions out to another shot where the camera is zooming out from 
this water pistol here. Now we can see this transition here by following this line as it moves, as I'm moving the camera back and forth, you can see it's being distorted. So that tells us there's been a lens distortion effect applied. I cover this on how to do this in my warp zoom transition, but when you add the CC lens, you can add the convergence amount here and see how that is essentially changing. So if I scale this up, you can see here that it's warping those lines on the outside. So they start to bend. That's what's happening. And that is part of any warp zoom transition, you need that as the camera is sort of zooming in, it distorts that image. And then the final thing you add over that is a bit of camera blur, just to blur that whole thing together. And again, it's following the same direction, which is backwards from that shot before. So seamlessly, the whole thing just transitions really nicely. So that's it for this video breakdown. Hopefully you've picked up a few tips and techniques you can use in your own videos. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also go and check out other videos I've got which are similar to this over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.